You know, sometimes in the morning when I am just slathering myself in sunscreen, I wonder if the sunscreen is really the amount that they claim on the package. It almost feels too good to be true sometimes. It's like, wow, is my favorite sunscreen really giving me an SPF 50? Or this fantastic product that costs a lot of money but works really well as like a sunscreen foundation. Is it really SPF 75? It almost feels too good to be true. And in some cases it has been. Ahem. <laughs> Purito. Now, when the Purito sunscreen debacle unfolded, a lot of brands started checking their ingredient lists, calling up their manufacturers, and even pulling some products off the shelf. And although I don't think that this Purito sunscreen disaster was Purito's fault, I think it was the manufacturer, it really taught the industry a lot of things. But here's the question, have things changed? And specifically, I have a couple of sunscreens that almost feel too good to be true. And I want to know if some of these brands, like the Korean Make Prem sunscreen, or the Australian Basics sunscreen, or even the American Trishy Skin Miracle Elixir sunscreen really hold up to what the label is saying because I am suspicious. And I want to be very clear here, this is not an allegation. I'm not saying that these sunscreens don't have this. I'm not saying that you should throw them away. If anything, it's a compliment. I'm saying, wow, these work so well, they feel like they are too good to be true. But the question I have is, which of these do I love and am I going to continue? you trusting and which of those actually need to be looked into and I, I want your opinion like this is an open conversation because this has been perplexing me you know after Purito took their products off the shelves a couple of other brands did too specifically some Korean ones but then we even had the benzene scare in sunscreen where very small trace amounts were found in certain products and everyone started freaking out pulling them off the shelves and now we have Winnie Harlow's sunscreen line saying that it's benzene free god please save us now sunscreen since then, Purito has tested and launched a new sunscreen that they claim does hold up to the SPF 50, which yes, I will be testing. But when I'm testing this and putting it on my face, I also do want to go a couple of steps further. Back with Purito, I was actually in contact with a laboratory. I was going to pay to do UV testing to actually see how some sunscreens held up, but then the lab shut down because of COVID, which was just lovely. But I wasn't the only one who got suspicious of some of these sunscreens. You know that we have a beautiful butterfly community. Hi, you're a part of it. We also have some amazing editors who work with us who know to reapply their SPF daily. And we have some beautiful editors who have freckles. And as you know, freckles are kind of like a little signpost for skin damage. And as the skin is exposed to the sun, freckles tend to show up more or to get darker. Now, certain editors have used some sunscreens, specifically two of them that are both SPF 50. And with one of them, the freckles tend to appear a little bit more, which is kind of suspicious. Now, one could argue, were you in the sun a different amount that day? Was there something different in the amount that was applied? Was one formula more liquidy? Were you wearing a different hat or sitting, you know, with a reflection of sunlight on your face? There are so many different things that go into this. But it really got me thinking about this and wondering, have you ever experienced that moment where you put sunscreen on and it feels so good and you're like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. It doesn't sting, it doesn't burn, it doesn't smell like sunscreen. It's protecting my face with like an SPF of 2,756. And then you go in the sun for five minutes and you're like, ooh, my skin is burning. Like, is my product old or expired? Like, what's going on? Like, there are just some that are too good to be true. And Make Prem specifically kind of did what Purito did, or so I believe. It really looks like they reformulated some of their best-selling sunscreens. Specifically, this right here is the UV Defense Me. I love this sunscreen, and this was one of my favorite K-Beauty sunscreens because it went on so absolutely beautifully smooth, and I still 10 out of 10 highly recommend this one. But a lot of beautiful butterflies were commenting, starting last year, saying, I got the Make Prem sunscreen but it's a lot more pasty than it looked on camera. And when I actually repurchased and when I've purchased some of the newer packages and newer formulations, oh yeah, this formula is slightly different. And if you can see, it's like, it's even more watery to a certain extent. And again, if anything, this is a compliment. It's like, wow, this product is so good. Like it cannot possibly be the SPF it is because of how great it feels on the skin. Now, we do have to remember that in Korea, they have access to different sunscreens, the actual ingredients that protect you from the sun that just aren't approved here in the United States. That's why when we have a American K-Beauty sunscreen like Glow Recipe, it can still pill up or it can still have that kind of stingy sunscreen feel just because American regulation does not allow the same formulas to be passed 
as a sunscreen. Even one of my favorite sunscreens from Crave Beauty from Leah Yu got taken off the shelves just because you can't claim that that's a sunscreen based on the American FDA laws and standards. Now that's great because it does protect us from the sun and it ensures that this product, which is literally an anti-cancer drug, actually does the thing that it says it will. The problem is, it's really sad for my favorite products that maybe I can't get anymore or I discontinued or just reformulated. Another one that has absolutely driven me bonkers is this one from Basics. This is an Australian company. They're supposed to be eco-friendly. They have these little bottles and this right here is fantastic. This is a hydrating CC face moisturizer, SPF 35 PA++++++. I love this formula, but when I use it, I cannot help but wonder, is this really an SPF 35? <laughs> like it goes on so beautifully, so elegantly and I haven't yet experienced like a bad burn with this one but I do feel like my face starts to get a little bit pink a little bit faster than some of my other SPF 35 products and please remember that I am always doing my two finger rule I am making sure that I apply a good amount of sunscreen because most people don't apply enough sunscreen if you're even applying it you're doing a great job I want you to give yourself a pat on the back and then a pat on the face with a sunscreen to make sure that we're still reapplying but a lot of people don't even apply sunscreen properly in the first place and that's why I make a point of trying to for both myself and you know trying to be a role model or an advocate for other people who are trying to learn how to create a good skincare routine when it's something that maybe our parents just didn't know and therefore didn't teach us and as you can see this is beautiful like feel this this is like a moisturizer CC cream it is so silky but it doesn't smell like sunscreen at all it doesn't sting my eyes it doesn't burn and if anything my skin burns a little bit more and it just has me thinking it's amazing or is it a little too good to be true to the point that it actually isn't what it says it is and even this one the skin better science I do think this one is super legit but like an SPF 75 you know this doesn't mean that you're 75% protected from the Sun it means that this lasts 75 times longer than something like an SPF of one and skin better sun science is amazing but this is one of those it's like wow this is like a foundation on my skin. Do you see how well this covers? Like you see this little red spot right here? Boom, 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 bang, it's gone. And this one is mineral and it has a bit of a tint. So obviously I feel like I'm a little bit more comfortable with that. Normally our mineral formulas are super, super pasty. And if there's ever a mineral formula that like has no paste whatsoever, again, I get suspicious because it's like so good. I'm like, is it too good? Now this is tinted, but I also wonder, is it really an SPF 75? Because they have some really high numbers, even nutrition Gina, they recently discontinued their SPF 100. Dr. Dre did a really great video recently about Neutrogena products that are discontinued and her favorite dupes for them. And while I don't purchase Neutrogena personally, one of our editors was very suspicious of that sunscreen because she felt that it did not protect her skin properly and her freckles started to show up. But also, as it's been taken off the shelves, Dr. Dre suspected that it might just be because it has certain SPF ingredients that tend to sting the eyes or a fragrance in it that could irritate the skin more. And while we really don't know, it also begs the question like are we testing these products wrong you know if you have an SPF 75 I will say I'm gonna fully admit when I wear this as a foundation I don't reapply my sunscreen throughout the day I just I don't do it it's hard to do over my makeup and I'm like I'm SPF 75 like I'm protected but in truth this just means that it's 75 times longer before I have to reapply whereas I should be reapplying like I normally do if it's a normal day I try to reapply at meal times and so then it brings up the behavioral question of am I or is one of our editors looking at this and saying oh it's SPF 75 or oh Neutrogena SPF 100 I don't have to reapply and therefore subjecting themselves to not reapplying and more sun damage by staying out in the sun longer it's kind of like the study or the phenomenon of people who drank diet sodas ate more cake they were like well the soda is diet so I can just eat an entire cake and go for it have your cake and eat it too but just because you drink a diet soda doesn't mean that it negates other behaviors and maybe the same thing is happening with sunscreen it's like oh I have SPF 100 I'm just gonna go lay out in the sun and fall asleep all Kim Kardashian Kardashian style up here. And while I would like to believe that these are just so fantastic that they are just too good to be true, and in the case of sun butter, skin science, and an isn't tree, I really do think it is. I also wonder, like, is there a reason that Make Prem reformulated this? Is it similar to the reason that Purito had to reformulate? I wonder, is this Australian basics line really giving me an SPF 35 with no sting, no irritation, no smell? Like, 
it's so good that I'm suspicious. And even Trishy Skin's Miracle Elixir, again, I have not purchased nor tried that line. It's not something I've purchased yet, so I'm just saying this completely speculatively. But if we wanna rewind and remember what happened when I was originally assessing that brand, by looking at the ingredients list, I was like, there's no way this is a sunscreen. Or there's no way that these are the only ingredients in this list because that formula just wouldn't be stable. And when I look at things like that, and when I realize that the Miracle Elixir is probably not approved by the FDA, they should not be claiming that this has an SPF because sunscreen is literally a topical on the skin anti-cancer drug. Like it literally prevents skin cancer. Now it also helps with fine lines and wrinkles. It stops collagen degradation. It helps to prevent scarring and hyperpigmentation and all of the great things that we love it for. But at the end of the day, it was created to be an anti-cancer drug. And what are drugs? Dangerous if misused, helpful if used properly and prescribed properly, but also they are regulated. And that's why brands who actually care about what happens to their customers like Purito go the extra mile to make sure that their things are tested and reformulated to be safe. And what is Trishy Skin? Um, very unregulated. And I feel like, again, this is all speculation, allegedly. I am not accusing anyone of anything here. I'm just saying, from my expertise, the ingredients in Trishy Skin do not look like that would be a stable sunscreen. And I am quite concerned as to whether or not the formula really protects the way it claims it does, especially seeing as, just from my little perspective sitting here at my desk instead of the floor today, it doesn't look like that is a sunscreen that would actually be doing the sunscreening, if you know what I'm saying. And that's why, like, I get curious, and I've obviously spoken about this with editors and with our beautiful Discord and Patreon family, but I'm like, does anybody else see this and get suspicious? Like the fact that it feels too good to be true, the fact that in the past sunscreens have been taken off the market and the fact that there are probably some instances that have kind of flown under the radar, it just makes me question things. And as someone who is a critic and a skeptic, like I do question everything. Blame it on my scientific mind or blame it on my distrust of authority. I don't know, but I do question everything. And especially as we get into warmer weather, I've really been questioning, is this really an SPF 75? Cause it's so good. And is this really an SPF 35? Cause it feels too good to be true. And then for the brands like Trishy Skin, <sighs> That entire line is a disaster, okay? Including the customer service. Explain to me how everything about a brand can be a disaster, but the SPF formula would not be. I'm, I'm, I'm just suspicious, okay? I'm calling it as I see it. What do you think? And does anyone know a somewhat affordable lab in which I could pay to test some of these things that isn't shut down and doesn't cost an arm and a leg and, you know, that I might actually be able to afford to do? And I know that burden doesn't fall on my shoulder, but you know, curiosity killed the cat. And when I was in the fifth grade, I told everyone that my name was Catsy. So, you know, maybe this is just the natural course of life and a self-fulfilling prophecy. What do you think? Is it too good to be true? Is there a sunscreen that you are suspicious of? And um, if anyone's tried Trishy Skin, I, I don't want to support the brand. Like I don't want to buy it, but um, if you have it and don't like it, I will cover shipping if you do want to send it to me. I'm very, very curious about what's going on there. So is James Welsh. Fun fact, I'm not the only one, okay? Okay, so do remember to stay hydrated. Do remember to reapply your SPF. I recommend this one from Isn't Tree because it literally feels too good to be true, but I actually think this one is good. And the new Purita one, this one too. I'm testing this one for you coming soon. And make sure that you subscribe so that when we actually show you how this one works, you don't miss it. Always be beautiful both inside and out. I'm going to wash this off my finger dingers and I will see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.